normalcy bias it basically means that most people most people and this is very important most people on the planet fail or actively refuse to plan or account for events that have never happened before we have an inbuilt state where we think the future will be a reflection of the past and just because something never happened before we our brain if we don't switch the sort of system two thinking which i'll talk about in a separate video our brain will convince ourselves that it is highly unlikely that something will happen that has never happened before Now let's get into it. Number one is anchoring bias. We humans usually completely rely on the first information that we receive, no matter how reliable that piece of information is, when we take decisions. The very first information has tremendous effect on our brain. For instance, I want to sell you a car, and you are interested to buy it. Let's say you ask me what the price is, and I tell you $30,000. Now, if you come back a week later and I say I'll sell it to you for $20,000, this seems like a new, very cheap price to you, right? Because your judgment is based on the initial information you got, which was 30000 You feel like you're getting a great deal. But, let's say the first time that you ask me and I say 10000 and then you come back the next week and I tell you I'm going to sell it to you for 20000 Now it doesn't look like a very good deal because of the anchoring bias. This is just a very generic use of the anchoring bias, and I don't want a bunch of comments about why a $30,000 car should be sold for $10,000, but another example is trees. What if I asked you if the tallest tree in the world was higher or lower than 1,200 feet? And if so, how tall? The same effect occurs if I asked you to guess out of thin air instead of giving you an anchor of 1,200 feet. The results are crazy. Number 2. Availability Heuristic Bias People overestimate the importance of information that they have. Let me give you an example here. Some people think that terrorism is the biggest threat to the United States because that's what they see on TV. The news always talks about it. And because of that, it inflates the danger. But if you look at the real perspectives, televisions cause 55 times more deaths than terrorism. Yes, TVs literally fall on people and kill them 55 more times than terrorism. You are more likely to be killed by a cow than a terrorist, according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. It's more likely to die from a coconut falling on your head and killing you than a terrorist attack. Thank you, Gary Vaynerchuk, for that one. Even the police that are hired to protect you from terrorists. It's estimated that you are 130 times more likely to be killed by the police than by a terrorist. That's because people do not make their decision based on facts and statistics, but usually they make it on news and stories and stuff they hear from other people. It's way scarier to die from a terrorist attack than a falling coconut. And because of this, usually the news won't cover it because there's not much money in it. Three is the bandwagon effect. People do or believe in something not because they actually do believe it, but because that's what the rest of the world believes in. In other words, following the rest without thinking. If you've ever heard someone say, well, if your friends jump off a bridge, would you? Then that someone is accusing you of the bandwagon effect. It happens a lot with us. I mean, a lot of people vote for a certain candidate in the election because he's the most popular, or because they want to be part of the majority. It happens a lot in the stock market, too. If someone starts buying a stock because they think it's going to rise, then a lot of other people are going to start picking the stock as well. It can also happen during meetings. If everyone agrees on something, you are more likely to agree with them on that object. Number four is choice supportive bias. So people have the tendency to defend themselves because it was their choice. Just because I made the choice, it must be right. For example, let's say a person buys an Apple product. Let's say it's a MacBook instead of a Windows PC. Well, he's more likely to ignore the downsides or the faults of the Apple computer while pointing out the downsides of the PC. He is more likely to notice the advantages of the Apple computer and not the Windows computer. Why would someone point out that they made a bad decision? Well, let's say you have a dog. You think it's awesome because it's your dog, although it might poop on the floor every now and then. The same goes for political candidates. Not the pooping part, but they both may suck. But one of the lesser of two evils may be more right in your mind because you voted for them.
Number five, confirmation bias. We tend to listen to information that confirms what we already know, or even interpret the information that we receive in a way that confirms the current information that we already have. Let's say that your friend believes that sweets are unhealthy. This is generally a pretty broad belief. He will only focus on the information that confirms what we already know. He is more likely to click on videos that confirm that belief, or read articles that support his argument. He doesn't go through and type, positive health effects of increasing blood glucose levels, or positive effects of eating a bowl of ice cream. No, he will instinctively go to Google and type in, how bad is sugar for you? Number six, the ostrich bias. This is the decision, or rather subconscious decision, to ignore the negative information. It may also be an indication we only want to consider the positive aspects of something. This goes beyond not only looking for the positive information, but this is when there is negative information and we choose to ignore it as an outlier. Sometimes, even when we have a problem, we try to ignore it thinking it will go away. Let's say you have an assignment to do. It's not something that you really want to do, so you may just keep on procrastinating with it because your mind thinks that it will go away or it is solved by ignoring it. Smokers usually, they know it's bad for their health, but a lot of them keep ignoring the negative implications of cigarettes, thinking it will not damage them or might stop them before anything serious will happen, because they consider themselves an outlier. To avoid finding out negative information, we just stop looking for it. Now this could be a serious crime in many scientific research laboratories, and basically promotes ignorance. Number eight, overconfidence. Sometimes you get too confident and start taking decisions not based on facts, but based on your opinion or gut because you have been correct so many times in the past. For example, you are a stock trader and you pick five stocks and in a couple years, all of them turn out to be successful or profitable. It increases your confidence to a point to where you can start believing that whatever stock you pick will be successful. It's quite dangerous because you might stop looking at the facts and solely rely on your opinion. Check out the gambler's fallacy if you want more information on this. Just because you flipped a coin five times and it landed on heads doesn't mean that the next time there's more than a 50% chance of it landing on a head again. Ego is the Enemy is a great book about this bias. Number 11, Selective Perception. I like this one. Selective perception is a form of bias that causes people to perceive messages and actions according to their frame of reference. Using selective perception, people tend to overlook and forget that contradicts their beliefs or expectations. Let's say, for example, you're a smoker and you're a big fan of soccer. You are more likely to ignore all the negative advertisements about cigarettes because since you are already smoking, you have this perception that it's okay to smoke. But if there's an advertisement about soccer, you are more likely to notice it because you have a very positive perception about it. This is actually something really interesting and has to do with how you perceive the world due to your subconscious mind and what it filters out. The last one is called the blind spot bias. If I asked you how biased you are, you would probably say that you are less biased than the average person, and you are more likely to base your judgment on facts and statistics, and that's what's known as a blind spot bias, or the bias bias. You are biased because you think that you are less biased than everyone else. For example, I gifted something to my teacher, and the next week she gave me a good grade on a test. If you ask her whether she was biased when she gave me that grade, the answer will be that the gift never affected her decision when marking my paper. But if you ask her if other teachers are biased when students give them gifts, she will say yes, in most cases. And that's what the blind spot bias is.